are in the scale room of the St. Johnsbury History and Heritage Center. And um, when we first got up and running, one of my dreams was to make sure that we told the story of the ENT Fairbanks Company that was started here in St. Johnsbury and then became the Fairbanks Moore Scale Works. And in order to do that, we needed to have the invention of Thaddeus Fairbanks, which was the platform scale. And so there was an awful lot of dreaming and hoping going on, but it was because of the Elizabeth Morse Genius Foundation that enabled us to put this all together and be able to tell the story of not only a little bit of the Industrial Revolution here in St. Johnsbury, but also what it led to as far as St. Johnsbury um, getting some wonderful cultural institutions. So what I'd like to start with is this platform scale that we have set up here. And um, this all came about at the time that the Fairbanks brothers were being brokers for farmers that were growing hemp. And they were brokering it for um, companies that were going to make rope from the hemp. And it was a very laborious process in that the farmers would bring their load of hemp in and they would have to offload it, weigh it, and then put it back on the wagon. And Thaddeus, whose brain I don't think ever stopped working, um, said there's got to be an easier way. And so he came up with this platform scale. And I'm in no way saying that this was the first platform scale, but what I am saying is this was probably the first very successful platform scale. And what you need to visualize when you look at this is this part of the scale would be right even with the road or where it was, and this part of it would be down in the ground so that you could just roll on with a wagon. And um, because people who are much better at understanding machinery than I want to see it, we have left the platform part of it open on either end so that those people can see the simplicity of it and how it came out and went to where it w would weigh the load that was put on it. Um, if this was outside, which it probably was in the day of the Fairbankses, this beam over here would have been enclosed in a wooden box and you would drop the top down and read from the uh, beam. But because it's inside, we coupled the scale with this that came out of an old um, railroad building that too was under cover. And what this literally did was to go on to weigh the world. Um, the success of this platform scale was in its simplicity and in its accurateness. If you look at the beam behind me here, you can actually see it's suspended. Um, the arrow part of it is not at the top, nor is it at the bottom, it's right in the middle. And yet, if I just take my finger and touch the scale, you can see that the beam is reacting to that. And um, this is what made it so good. And in any of the research that I've done, I'm, I'm not sure they grasped what they had come up with because there was thought that maybe there would be some towns in Vermont that might buy one of these things uh, to weigh hay on and for selling that. But it literally went on to weigh the world. And it took this very small manufacturing plant down there that had been making stoves that we have a couple of examples of and had been making wagons that we have an example of. Um, and they also made uh, cast iron plows, they made pitchforks, 
but all that would be forgotten as the scales literally um, took over their life. Um, the wagon that is on this platform here, we have a chronology of this wagon that pretty much points to this is the wagon that the Fairbanks family came from Brimfield, Massachusetts in 1815. This is also the wagon that Thaddeus made uh, down on the banks of the Sleepers River when they were first getting started. And um, I guess I have to say that if anything in this room could uh, talk to us, I guess I'd like this wagon to have its say. But it, I'm, I feel very, very fortunate that the wagon is here today. But this is what they came up from in 1815. The uh, other thing that people might wonder, I mean, the richness of St. Johnsbury back in the 1800s was the fact that they had three rivers flowing in. And of course, that was a great source of power. And the Sleepers River, the Fairbanks used it for a grist mill and for a sawmill. But why did they come up here? And it was because they had relatives up here. Phoebe Fairbanks, who was the mother of Thaddeus, Erastus, and Joseph, uh, had a brother up here, Ephraim Paddock. And they had correspondence about coming up to St. Johnsbury. And that is essentially how it happened. And so in putting this room together, uh, this was the focal point as far as I was concerned. I mean, if we took this scale and we put it out in the middle of Main Street, um, you could take strings and draw it almost anywhere. You could go to the courthouse because the Fairbanks helped with the courthouse. You could go to the South Church. You obviously could go to the Academy, which they established in 1842. You could go to the Athenaeum. You could go to the Fairbanks Museum. You could even go to the tomb up at Mount Pleasant Cemetery where there is ceramic brick that was laid up. You could go to the courthouse, uh, which really came down from Danville because um, of the success of the Fairbanks and feeling that that should be um, the Shire town then. And you could go down to the railroad with another string. And everything really comes from this invention of the platform scale. Um, on the back of the wall up here, we have one of the largest patterns. And um, at one time, not terribly long ago, there was a building that held many of these very old uh, patterns. Uh, but it was in terrible shape, and you almost risked your life to go into it. But this one was salvaged, and it was what the foundry used to make um, a lever. And the lever probably was either to a canal scale or to a railroad scale, which you can actually kind of figure out if you look at the model railroad scale over in the exhibit. And uh, it was filled with sand. And anyway, it was salvaged. And we put that up as an example of what the foundry did. And that also is what we have a number of tools that all relate to the foundry. And we also have a, a bell that was rung at the foundry. And up on the wall, we have a fantastic uh, picture of the crew of the foundry. And um, in one of the rows is a man by the name of Francis Walker that actually headed up the foundry for over 60 years. Um, so that's, that's quite a neat thing to have. Um, probably the scale that is the most familiar, uh, being found the most in um, any of the New England states or anywhere else was the portable platform scale that you see on the far end over there. And uh, it was portable in that it was on wheels, but you most often found these in barns or in sheds, and they could weigh corn or whatever they needed to. And that 
seem to be one of the po most popular ones. I always get a kick out of every once in a while you can still go into a doctor's office and the health scale is one of the Fairbank scales as well. The exhibit itself is dedicated to the friendship of Franklin Fairbanks, who was a second generation. Uh, his father was Erastus, the E of E.N.T. Fairbanks, and Charles Hosmer Morse. And Charles Hosmer Morse was born in St. Jay Center, and he entered um, the company, and um, then went from there to New York, and eventually got out into the Chicago area, and um, actually got the controlling interest of the ENT Fairbanks Company, but the friendship of Franklin and Charles Hosmer Morse was always there. So it's only fitting that we talk about them together. Um, as I said before, there, we have a number of different scales. Um, we have a health scale here, and um, we also have a recruiting scale. And that was like a suitcase, and I might add it's a very heavy suitcase that they would take around when they were recruiting for Army or Navy, things like that. We have a, um, a fire bucket hung there, and that's why it's rounded on the bottom, so nobody would just drop it somewhere. Uh, it was to hang on a hook. We have the um, candlestick telephone uh, that was, lots of them were used down there at the plant. Um, in this case, we have multiple examples of the scales that they made, and uh, going from a postal scale that would weigh a single letter to a cream uh, testing scale to a baby scale and then the model of the railroad over here. Um, I guess if I had to find any fault with the ENT Fairbanks company is that they didn't save an example of every scale they made. In fact, they didn't even save a lot of their artwork and uh, catalogs. So um, we've had to hunt and be recipients of catalogs and pictures from other people. And I, I have to just tell you that some of these pictures that are in here that go with the scales, um, they're like ready for catalog. They're catalog ready. And there were hundreds of them that were just literally dumped in dumpsters. And luckily, there was a dumpster diver in our midst. And, um, he retrieved many of these, and um, at the time of his passing, his son asked if we might be interested. And as you can see, they're just lovely. Uh, so we are, are very happy about that. Um, we have weight testers, we have the dry measures that are here, and uh, it's just, inconceivable, you know, when you think about it, that you can go from weighing a locomotive to weighing a single piece of paper, which is what they did. One of the fascinating stories here is these leggings. Uh, they're leather, and these came about uh, as something that were thought of as a safety device if you were a member of the foundry and pouring, you know, the, uh, from the cauldrons of the iron to make some of these patterns. And um, I was fortunate enough to talk with the last head of the foundry, which was Midge Lavely. And the foundry closed in 1972. And he said when these leggings came out, that the man, the men said, we're not wearing those things. You know, if a piece gets down between our clothing and the legging itself, this just isn't gonna work. And he said they literally walked off the job and um, all the upper men had to run the foundry that day. 
but it, it was really interesting to see, uh, you know, when you think of the foundry, if you, th if you think of hot, if you think of dirty, and think of smoky, that's what they were in. Um, but still, uh, one of the things that always fascinated me was what they thought of their job, and they really um, were dedicated. But we feel very fortunate to have this pair of leggings that kind of tells a story of when things change, it change isn't always easy. Um, this smaller case has some interesting scales in it as well, as well as a trading card, which is right up here, but also has a picture of Francis Dureshi that many will remember uh, ran uh, Dureshi's pharmacy. And this is a picture of him in the war. And we have his pharmacist's weights that he carried during the wait, during the war, excuse me. Um, and, and these are some examples of some of the smaller scales as well in the front here. I hope this kind of overall quick snapshot of the um, exhibit will uh, whet your appetite to come in and um, really take a good look at it. Uh, we are ever so grateful for the Elizabeth Morse Genius Foundation for allowing us to tell this story um, because it really does tell the story of how St. Johnsbury got to be what it was and, uh, and is. And I, I think that's pretty important when you consider that uh, Fairbanks could have put their money in their pockets, but instead there were lots of institutions and that really um, made this town what it is. And we are grateful for their support in allowing us to not only display but to take care of the building itself with a roof. And um, I'm actually standing here in uh, late November without my jacket on because we have a Renai heater to take the chill off. We don't keep it going all the time, but we can do that on special occasions too. And we have a uh, ceiling fan so that we can keep the humidity where it should be. And we, we wouldn't have been able to do this without their support. And uh, um, please, if you have the opportunity, come and look at it yourselves. Thanks.